when I tell people I'm a biologist, they often think of state-of-the-art labs, electron microscopes, advanced computers. But actually, a lot of my work looks more similar to that of a 19th century naturalist. Victorian biologists, like Alfred Russell Wallace, traveled all over the world with little more than a butterfly net, some vials, and a bottle of spirit. In those days, biology meant collecting, preserving, describing, and classifying anything you could find. And, 160 years later, some things haven't changed a bit. Together with my colleague, Magdalene Lakim, I recently led an expedition to Mount Kinabalu in Borneo. Following in Wallace's footsteps, we worked with insect and bird nets, plant presses, and lots and lots of tubes, jars, and flasks for anything from tiny spiders to bits of giant rainforest tree. Our aim was to study endemics, species found only on the mountain and nowhere else on Earth. When Wallace visited Borneo in 1855, he saw that endemic species like these were always found near similar-looking lowland creatures, suggesting that one had evolved from the other. And we now know that he was right. Our question is how and where this evolution took place. Fortunately, we have a few more tools at our disposal than Wallace did. We took DNA samples from every species we collected, from flies and leeches to mushrooms and orchids. So we could work out how all the species are related to each other, where they came from and when they evolved. And that's knowledge that Wallace could only have dreamed of. As it turns out, the endemic species on the Cool Mountain Summit had evolved not only from nearby lowland species, but also from species that had drifted in from distant mountains or cooler lands. In either case, most of these ancestors were already adapted to high altitudes or cold climates, so they only had to make small adjustments to their new niche which means that we don't know how well this vulnerable mountain biodiversity will be able to cope with the speed of modern climate change. While Wallace and his fellow explorers set out only to catalogue an ecosystem, today we have far more specific questions. But the methods of the Victorian naturalists still serve us well, and future biologists may well continue wielding those same butterfly nets. The question is whether all these unique mountain species will still be there for them to catch.